When we're looking at a substitution reaction, it's important that we are able to accurately predict which mechanism the substitution reaction will take. So for example, that means we need to be able to predict if a substitution reaction is gonna proceed via SN2 or SN1. And this is one example of a reaction in the previous videos where I showed this reaction taking place by both the SN2 and the SN1 pathways. So you as chemists will need to be able to look at a react reactants and determine if they will take the SN2 or the SN1 pathway. Why is this important for you to be able to do? The short answer is that the products of these reactions differ based on which mechanism it's taking. There are two ways in which the products of the substitution reaction are different, SN2 versus SN1. One way is just simply the stereochemistry. If we have an SN2 mechanism, we will get 100% of a particular enantiomer. We'll either have 100% R or 100% S. But if we're looking at the SN1 mechanism, we'll get a racemic mixture, which means we'll get 50% R and 50% S. So that's one reason that we need to know which mechanism to take. And the other reason that we need to, to know SN1 versus SN2 is due to carbocation rearrangement that takes place when we're looking at an SN1 reaction. The carbocation rearrangement has the potential to change the whole entire carbon skeleton of the molecule, but on a lesser level, it changes the position of the incoming nucleophile. So it, it creates a totally different constitutional isomer from the SN2 product. So it's really important that you know when you're looking at a reaction like this, you know whether you should draw the SN2 or the SN1. There are four different variables that we can consider when we're trying to choose SN2 or the SN1 mechanism. And I'm going to take you through all four of these variables in order of importance. And I'm going to do each one of them in a separate video. So we're going to start with the most important predictor, which is the structure of the substrate. The substrate is the uh, electrophile, the thing that is being attacked, the thing that has the leaving group, the alkyl halide, whatever, whatever um, terminology you want to use. Alkyl, they're typically alkyl halides, but the leaving group is not always a halogen, so it's not always an alkyl halide. So we know, for example, if we have a molecule that has a primary, or excuse me, a methyl carbon, so something like this, a carbon that has three hydrogens, no R groups, and the leaving group attached to that, and I'm actually going to draw this um, in condensed notation. When we have that type of molecule, because we cannot form a carbocation on a methyl carbon, it's too unstable, this particular type of substrate will only do the SN2 mechanism. So anytime you see this type of molecule, three hydrogens on the carbon that's holding the leaving group, your only option is to do SN2. Likewise, if we have a primary alkyl halide, so I'm going to, I'm going to start by drawing it out. A primary alkyl halide means that we would have two hydrogens on the carbon with the leaving group. So that's what it would look like. That is also too unstable to do an SN1 reaction. So I'm going to write that as primary CH. 2RLG. So that's a carbon that has two hydrogens plus some other alkyl group with a, with a leaving group on it. That is also only going to do the SN2 reaction. We're not going to form a carbocation on that guy. Um, we have, if we have a secondary alkyl halide, so that's going to be a carbon with one hydrogen, two carbon chains attached and some sort of leaving group. The secondary 
alkyl halides or whatever the leaving group it might be, these ones can do either SN2 or SN1. So they're capable of doing both mechanisms and they won't do both at the same time. They will do one or the other. We're going to have to look at a different variable to predict which mechanism will predominate. So we can't, we can't use the structure of the substrate to predict the mechanism. And then last but not least, and I'm actually going to leave some lines here because we're going to draw some other stuff, tertiary alkyl halide. So that's a carbon that has no hydrogens on it at all, CR3, LG. These will only do SN1 because they're st too sterically hindered or too crowded for the SN2 mechanism where the nucleophile has to attack the carbon before it loses its leaving group. This type of molecule is only capable of doing an SN1. Now, there are a couple of types of molecules that fit in the middle between secondary and primary that you haven't been introduced to yet. One is called an allyl or allylic alkyl halide. We're just going to say Rx. An allylic alkyl halide is also, like secondary, is also going to do either the SN2 or the SN1 mechanism. And an allylic molecule is one where the leaving group is attached to a carbon that is directly attached to a carbon-carbon double bond. So it's really important that you get the spacing correct on, on what it means to be allylic. So for example, this is not allylic. The leaving group cannot be directly attached to the double bond. Also, this is not allylic. The leaving group can't be too far away from the double bond. It has to be exactly one carbon in between the leaving group and the double bond. So allylic, even though this particular allylic is a primary carbon, it's stabilized by resonance and it's capable of doing either SN1 or SN2. And then a similar molecule is the benzylic or benzyl alkyl halide. And it also is capable of doing SN2 or SN1, either one. So if you have allylic or benzylic, then you have to, you cannot predict the SN1 versus SN2 mechanism just based on the structure of the molecule. Here is a benzylic, an example of a benzylic molecule. Like allylic, it is a leaving group that's attached to a carbon that is directly attached to, in this case, a benzene ring. Um, but you'll see that allylic and benzylic, they really just have the same sort of pattern. And again, this one carbon atom in between the leaving group and the benzene ring are crucial. So for example, this is not benzylic because it's attached directly to the ring. And also you cannot get too far away. So this also would not be benzylic because it's too far away from the ring. So in summary, when we're trying to determine SN1 versus SN2, when we look at the structure of the substrate, if it is methyl or primary or tertiary, we immediately know which mechanism it will take and we don't have to consider any other variable. If it's secondary or allylic or benzylic, these are capable of doing either SN1 or SN2, and in these cases, we have to move on to another factor to try to predict if it's SN1 or SN2.